Welcome back to another video and today we're breaking down a music video that we recently did. So let's jump right in. So this was a really long one day shoot. We had two locations. The budget was around 8k and there were about 30 something people on set. We shot this music video on the OSAP 4.6k which should come as no surprise if you've seen my last videos. The lenses we used were the Cookspeed Pancros. We had a full set of them and they're pretty classic vintage lenses that um, we really wanted to try and shoot on. 99% of the shots in this music video were shot either on a Steadicam or sticks, and for the lighting we used mostly Astera tubes and aperture lights. And for wireless monitoring we used the Axun Cineview SE, um, which I'm gonna talk about later in this video. If you guys want to watch the full music video, there's a link down in the description, but now let's dive into the breakdown. So let's start with the first location in this shooting day and let's break down the lighting for this shot. So we have the band and we're on a steady cam. We're pushing in and tilting up. So that gives us a nice introduction to the band. For the lighting over from the right side of frame, we have the key light, which is just one Astera tube set to a warm color tone. And then we have another Astera tube just on top um, above the band. And as you can see, we kept the, the spotlights in the ceiling on. And there are also some candles. So that's just helping create more interest. Then the next shot, we're introducing our main character of the music video. And we're starting off with these two guys just having a chat. And then we have a whip movement and we're introduced to our main guy. And as he walks in, we're tracking back with him. And this is all done with the Steadicam. So for the lighting here, we have two Astera tubes from camera right and that's serving as the key light lighting his face and then coming from these windows from the back and from camera left we have an aperture 600c um, on a blue teal kind of color shining through a diffusion and that just really helps create color contrast because now we have a warm key light and a cooler um, backlight um, so this blue light like really helps separate our talent uh, from the background there and then I want to look at this shot we're following the waitress and we're panning left and introducing our main guy again but this time with someone new so lighting wise this space is lit pretty similarly to the previous shot but we just moved the key light so it's now um, coming here from camera left Then the shot of them kissing against the bar. That was really simple. This is actually something we just instantly kind of saw when we location scouted the place. We have all of these beautiful bottles um, lit um, back there just by the natural uh, lighting of the place. Then to even accentuate it more and make it more beautiful, we have one Astera tube just above them, giving us this really, really beautiful rim light separating them from the background and just making sure they're not completely silhouetted. And I think this was on the 50 mil, um, just to kind of compress the background and, you know, make them feel closer together. And as you can see, things are pretty blurry out there. So we're also quite um, open in terms of the aperture. This sequence of shots in the bathroom are happening later on in the music video. And at that point, our character is really in a downward spiral. He's not feeling good. He's really overwhelmed with things. He's tired, he's exhausted. So we have this one Astera tube lighting this and it's set to a very yellow, greenish, um, like a very sicklish sort of color, um, just to help serve the story there, make everything feel sick. And then mixed between these shots of the bathroom, uh, we also have the band, uh, which are also shot in slow-mo and in kind of very twisted angles, very like, dramatic, extreme, low angles. Again, just to support this feeling of, um, of a downward spiral. Then we have our main subject enter the bar 
again this is the third time that we're seeing this entrance um, but this time the perspective is changed so this is after all of these shots in the bathroom and the guy just getting you know dizzy and sick so for this shot we're using a snowy cam which basically gives us this really cool effect where the camera is moving with the body of the person wearing it so we're getting this really unique and kind of different effect that really gives off the feeling of, uh, of dizziness. This is used a lot in music videos to um, show people like being drunk. So that's kind of what we went for in this uh, shot here. And for that we couldn't use the Osa of course because it's way too heavy. So we used the Blackmagic Pocket 6K, uh, sorry 4K. Uh, with the Zenitar 16mm lens and the colors were not too hard to match since um, it's both uh, Blackmagic color science. So for the lighting we have pretty much the same thing going on as previous shots only this time the Astera tubes for the key light are a bit closer to him and then the last shot of this location which is also the last shot um, of this music video we are tracking again with the bar in the background there and for the lighting we have one Astera tube just above them which is giving us this really really beautiful key light um, on the girl um, you can see how it's shaping her face really nicely we have a very like dominant shadow side and beautiful highlights on her forehead her nose and um, her cheek over there so the key light is really doing a, a great job there in shaping her face and then it's also giving our guy um, this sort of like backlight and we also have two more tubes from camera right which are giving her the backlight and they also are serving as the key light as our guy stands up and you can see the key light is now side lighting and that's done by the two stereo tubes from camera right and we're also getting a very beautiful edge light and this is a frame I really like. I think the lighting is beautiful. It's dramatic and we just have a lot of interest. We have the candles there um, on the table. We have some reflections and we have all of these bottles um, there in the background. So that is it for the first location and now we can uh, move on to the second location, which was the second part of the day. But before we do that, let's talk about the wireless transmission system we used on this production. So Axon sent me their new Cineview SE system to test out, and just for full disclosure, they are paying me to include this section in the video. However, I can pretty much say whatever I want. My initial impression from the Cineview SE is that it's a really good wireless transmission option for low budget, small crews or individual creators. It's not on the same level as some of the much more expensive options out there, like Teradec, but it is comparable to other low budget options out there. These transmitters are pretty small, which is a plus, and the build quality feels really good. There's both HDMI and SDI in and out in the SE version, and the signal is transmitted using a dual band frequencies technology, which increases signal stability and helps send the video to a maximum range of 1200 feet, or at least that's what Exxon is claiming. I haven't tested it out for myself yet. The power options are either NPF batteries, or there's also a DC and a USB-C port. The Axon Go app is really useful. You can use it on an iPad or a phone and do things like live streaming, saving screenshots. You also have false colors, histograms, grids, and some other cool features. On our production, we used the app to view everything on an iPad, which was really convenient. The claimed latency or delay for the system is 50 milliseconds. I haven't tested this out properly. However, there's definitely is a noticeable delay as there always is with all of these budget options. Only the real high-end, really expensive systems have a close to zero latency. This isn't a huge deal for standard shots, but for a fast moving scene, you'll definitely want the latency close to zero, which then you'll need a very expensive system. The only real downside that I experienced personally on this production 
is the image quality we were getting on our monitors, which was okay, but definitely not great, especially when we had faster camera movements, there was a bit of pixelation and bending, uh, which is a bit to be expected given the price range of this product. And this also happens with other similar low budget products out there. This isn't really a big deal for me, um, at least on like smaller productions. But if you're on a bigger set, on a more professional environment, um, you'll definitely want something with a little bit of a better image quality. So all in all, I think this is a very solid product, which would make a good choice for an individual creator or a small crew. The price range is really unbeatable. The build quality is great. The signal is solid and it's really easy to use. You're definitely getting value for your money here. So thank you to Axon for sending me the Cineview SE to use in this production. And now let's get back into the breakdown. So our second location was a studio space and that was all the shots that were um, in this kind of like dark um, nothingness. To create this black space, we put up some black fabrics. So this setup with the band playing, um, we have two tubes coming from either side of the frame and as a backlight we have this stage light coming from uh, over the top and from the back. And we also have our gaffer walking around with another tube um, together with the camera. And that just helps create a bit more movement and interest for this shot. And of course, we also have haze. Um, so all of the light is accentuated and we get this, you know, performance stage, uh, dreamy kind of uh, feeling. And then these two shots are only the stage light without the tubes and this shot that i really like is with the stage light still on and then from the left we have the nova set to this greenish color which really creates a nice contrast you know with the orange color and then for this shot we have a blue gel over the stage light and there's the nova um, again from the left and then a stereo tube from the right side of the frame they're all set to a blue color and you can see the hot spots over there are from the stage light and then the nova and the tube light are filling in all of the less harsh parts of the image there and then for this top shot it's just the nova set to a blue color um, bouncing off of the ceiling with all of the other lights turned off the shot of this vintage tv is only with the spotlight on and we're not using a green screen so that later when we composite the shots into the tv we can still keep the original reflections for the shots of the dolls having the time of their lives, we basically just used a screen as a background and we just put a red solid there and that was pretty much it in terms of the setup. So that is all for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you learned something new. If you have any more questions about this production or about anything really, um, leave a comment down below. And if you like this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing for more of these videos. That would be highly appreciated. And if you wanna connect, if you wanna shoot me a message, um, see my stories behind the scenes, um, that kind of stuff. And make sure you follow me at uvale96 over on Instagram. And if you want to get really awesome film assets like film burns, grain, um, split screen elements, film emulation power grade, lots, um, all of that good stuff, um, then check out the link in the description. There's also a discount code there. These are all products made by myself and um, my two good friends who also worked with me on this music video. So these are things I'm using daily for clients and just for my own personal projects. So um, check it out. So thank you for watching this video and hopefully I'm gonna see all of you in the next one.